I'm going to use the new bolts because obviously the old ones <coughs> you run them up quite tight so yeah there is a there is a chance you could stretch them good morning YouTube so it is a bank holiday weekend and at the moment it's, it's a bit cloudy but it's dry it's it's cool which is quite nice because uh, it's time to work again so yeah a few clouds in the skies a little orangey thing up there being masked by a few clouds at the moment but uh, it's okay it's about about half eight in the morning so um, yeah today's job let me show you let's walk this way so today it is getting all that lot onto the S3 so the brakes on it um, I did a little bit of work what was the last thing I did oh yes the bracket bumper bracket and took the wheel off and I noticed there's a little bit of cracking in the, the front disc not major but a little bit there but I don't like things like that so the brake disc on the back um, let me show you uh, a well worn they've been on there for quite a while a, there's a little bit of a lip on there but they're all corroded and a lot of they've been changed in the last few years and I've not changed the brakes since I've had it uh, the front ones again a little bit of lip in there and I say a little bit of cracking as well you can't really see it I'm sure but yeah what's going to happen today is get it jacked up and get those on so let me make some uh, some room on the drive and we'll get started Okay, so that's the Mrs. car moved out of the way, giving me a little bit of space. Um, I think I'll do the, let's do the front of the backs first, I'm not too sure. Mm, the backs, yeah, let's do the backs first. So, as I say, I've got uh, a brand new disc now, I haven't gone for anything too fancy. Um, I've had slotted, drilled discs in the past, and I don't know, for, for the driving I do, um, these are fine. I mean, they're 345, I think, so they're big old discs. So they're going to stop you anyway. And I've even invested in a new uh, low entry, I think you call them, low entry jack um, from Screwfix. And I think that's only about 25 quid, so if it lasts a year then the jobs are good. But uh, yeah, one of my old jacks had uh, had its day. I've had it for years and it gave in. So let's get the car jacked up. Um, I'm going to stick you on the, uh, on the tripod so you can see what I'm doing. Um, probably stick a head cam on as well and, and see how much of this I can capture. It's not a how-to video by any means um, but it's just a video that uh, hopefully may help a few people out with some ideas and just make people realise that actually changing your brakes all around isn't a, isn't a really bad job. You've just got to take your time. It's a bit like Lego. Take your time, sort out where your pieces are and uh, put them all back in the right place. Um, one of my tips if you're not sure about how to, to change brakes and do them is obviously watch YouTube videos but take loads of pictures. Okay, When you get an hour in and you forgot what you've taken off already, go back to your pictures, have a look. Anyway, I'm waffling so let's get you set up on the tripod and let's get the car jacked up and uh, start changing these brakes out. notice there guys um, we've gone for the health and safety measures um, I know we joke about health and safety and some people go oh god it's just uh, it's just idiots making up rules to hamper us in their job well this one is one I do use I've seen cars collapse on people in the garage trade and you don't want a car on top of you because they're heavy <laughs> very heavy so always get yourself an axle stand you can hold it on the jack that's fine but put an axle stand under as well. Okay, also, bear in mind that at the moment I'm jacking the back end up. 
as soon as you jack the back end up, what's going to happen? Oh yeah, it's going to roll backwards because your handbrake's on the back end, unless it's got a Saab. Saabs are different. So, always get chocks with new wheels. I use these, um, now they call them something when you're actually driving forklifts and you're chocking stuff up, but I can't remember what they are, so I just call them wooden chocks. You want something fairly substantial that's going to sit under your wheel, okay, and just hold it. So if it does start to roll, that, believe it or not, will stop it. But, guys, always, 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 make sure you're safe, okay? That's more important than anything else. Make sure you're safe, okay? Health and safety notice over. Let's get back on with some work. Okay, so we're all jacked up. Uh, so what I've got to do now, we've got some 13 mils of leave on the back there. And basically the whole caliper will come out. Let me just come out a bit because this camera for some reason doesn't like uh, doesn't like close-up shots. So two 13 mils behind there, one, two, top and bottom. Undo those. Uh, you may need to put yourself a spanner on there as well. I think that's about 15, something like that, but don't take me, take my word on that. Um, the whole caliper then will slide out, change the pads, have to take the caliper cover off and then there is a, a screw just there which uh, yeah, may or may not come out, they're also pain in the backside. They are a spline drive or I think that's what you call them, star drive for some people. Don't know what size, again I know what fits, I don't always know what it's called. Um, so the whole caliper will come off completely, that will let you take the disc off and then put it all back together again. So, I'll take this camera on wide view so you can see what I'm doing from a distance and then uh, splice this all together and stick the head cam on and hopefully you can see what's going on. Okay, so I've got the trusty head cam on. Um, this could all go very wrong very quickly. <laughs> I have no idea. Right, let's, uh, let's start. First of all, we're gonna need a 13. So we're going to need a 13 mil. So I hope you can see this. So what we've got here is 13 mil on the back, and obviously that front one's twisting. I believe that's a 15. Yes, it is. It's a 15. So 13 on the back, 15 on the front, and literally just. Wind those out. I've got a ratchet spanner somewhere, I should really use that, but not to worry. You can see a little bit of what's going on. Okay, so there you go, 13 mil at the back, and good. That's got uh, mias on it, which stops it coming out, and a 15 mil on the front there. And I can actually get you in closer. Again, I'm on head cam, so I don't know how this is going to come out. Okay, that is spongy and springy, allows the caliper to move in and out. So that's the top one off, and we'll do the same with the bottom. 13 on the back, give it a little crack. And a 15 on the front. Again with these, it doesn't matter which one you wind, as long as you're winding one of them, or both of them at the same time. So the front one is a retaining screw, there's a nice M3 going up the road, <laughs> with straight pipes. Somebody from over the road, hear it every day, wants to give it some even from cold. So 13 mil out, that's eight. These move around because they are on sliders and greased up inside there, so they do move quite easily. So once you've got once you've got your two 13 mils out, 
you should in theory be able to slide your caliper back and release it like that now what I really want to do is get that out of the way so I may go and get myself a bungee and actually hook that up but as you can see hopefully now we've got the caliper off your brake pads literally fall out now be very careful with these spring clips Okay, they're your anti, I think they call them anti squeal strips or something like that. They basically hold your, your pads in place. So when you take these out, you may find these drop out. Um, just remember which way they go in. The air these are not too bad because they are joined together, but some of the other cars they are single and it's not always obvious. So there's the brake pads. Um, fair bit of meat on them, but again, you see from the state of the disc it does want changing okay it could go it could go a lot longer if I'm honest but it's me if I'm going to change the brakes on a car you might as well just do the whole lot have it done with your brakes will last on the back a lot lot longer than the fronts anyway because your front does most of the braking the BIOS is probably about 80% on the front so your back will last a lot longer but again you know if if you're changing them changing the fronts do the lot you may find yourself though changing the fronts twice and only changing the back once but again I haven't changed these since I bought the car looking at this there is some tiny hairline cracks in it they're not bad not bad at all to be honest in fact if you machine those down they would probably go again but I'm not going to um, for the sake of I think it for the back ones it was about oh Christ I don't know 40-50 quid something like that you might as well just get them changed right I'm gonna get that caliper out of the way and then we'll get this back plate off and then that should enable me to get the disc off and we'll put the new ones on. Okay, so hopefully you can see. Um, let me come down a bit just in case. Got the caliper out of the way. Uh, just helps to see around the back here. Um, I'm gonna drop the second pad out. Again, look at the pads, not too bad at all. Seen a lot worse. So now, what I've got to work out is how to get this back plate off. Um, I'll be honest, it's not the usual way I've seen them mounted. Let's try and get through here without hitting my head. Um, I think. Mm, okay. <laughs> right, this is the bit where I go, oh, because usually you've got a couple of bolts just round the back there. Um, but to be honest, I am not seeing them on this. Let's try and get my head around a bit further. Trying to dodge myself. Um, again, not easy with head cam on, but I want you guys to see this as I'm doing it just to uh, try and help out where I can right. I think yeah I think it's that there now it feels like a one of these special Audi star drives which I'll have to go and get I think if I take that off that actually is a bolt that goes all the way through into this bracket and releases it so give me a minute and we'll give that a try Okay, so I've got the uh, the star drives that Audi tend to use. Um, anybody that owns an Audi will have to buy some of these at some point or another. And I'm hoping the smallest one I've got is going to fit into that bracket. Will it? Okay, fair enough. It is not the smallest one. Ah, I think I found where the two are. They're right back there. Yeah, sneaky Audi. Oops, there you go, this is what happens when you've got a head cam on in a confined area. Uh, right, I'll try one more up, but I think it may be that one. Oops, actually, all the dirt ingress on that, yeah, it is. It is that one, so it is a... Um, yeah. 
I'm seeing M14. That sounds about right. So it's an M14. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop the head cam off because it really is restricting me. And there goes the compressor. I'm going to drop the head cam off and I'm going to get these out because I'm not going to be able to do it with you guys on my head. So I'll catch you in a minute. So guys, let me just update you on this because this is becoming a complete pain in the backside. So typical Audi design this and I've found it so many times on the Audis I've had. You've got a bolt there. Now I've managed to get the bottom one off um, and I'll show you that in a second. But there is the top one there. Now as you can see, hopefully you can see, let me try and get the viewfinder. I've got the socket on and I've got a breaker bar on there. Now these are exceptionally tight, I mean properly tight, but you've got no room. Look, you've got no room. There's no room whatsoever. I've had to drop it down just there, but I've got no room to manoeuvre it whatsoever. Um, it's almost as if you've got to buy a new tool for every time you work on the Audi. It's, oh, it's the annoyance of these cars, it really is. So I'm going to keep trying to get this out, but um, yeah, the back ones are proving interesting at the moment. I think the front ones will go a lot, uh, lot easier, but yeah, this is becoming um, annoying at best. Right, let me crack on and um, I'll get back to you in a minute. So if I was to say to you that was easy, I would be a big fat liar. And I'm not, it was a pain in the ass. So let me just take you through this. You've got star drives there, um, which are not a bad idea. Don't get me wrong, they, they do the job well. Um, you, don't, you don't really round them off when you're doing them as long as you get the socket well in there. But basically, that's the way you see it on the disc and the bolts come from the back but as I showed you earlier there is absolutely no room whatsoever to get well certainly this kind of socket in there um, because it goes back so far and it hits uh, if you can see that it hits it hits a bar in there yeah, I'll, I'll take my word for it so it's off which is good right the next thing is this screw here I think it's a 30 uh, yeah that was a good guess wasn't it so that is a T30 uh, torque star whatever you want to call it drive and you're joining me live so this could either go brilliantly or horribly wrong because ah excellent <laughs> it went brilliantly these can sometimes be a right pain in the ass but it's fine that one was um, was good yeah that one's real good. I'm impressed with that. So, now all that's off. In theory, we have a little tapping device. Off she comes. There you go. That is a back disc brake off. And yeah, looking at it now in the cold light of day, I'm glad I'm taking these off because I'm not sure how much you can see of this. There's a fair bit of I won't say damage on there but obviously I've just give it a crack there so there's a dint but they are yeah they're gone uh, they have got some cracking they've got scoring on them they've started to get a lip and all oh, the insides even worse there you go so I'm glad I'm changing them okay so now we get the new one on I'm going to do a little clean up first so I'm just going to take the, the cam off the head do a bit of cleaning up and then it's time to get the new stuff on join me in a minute Okay YouTube, we're back. So, here we are. One new disc. Which I'm going to take out the bag. Nice and shiny. Clean and new. And some brake pads. So the first thing I want to check before I do anything is A, I've got the right pads. Because we know shops never make mistakes, don't we? And that all looks good. Yeah, so they are definitely the right pads. Um, interestingly, these have not got anti squeals on the back these new ones have so at some point somebody's changed those and took those off fair enough and oh, also in the kit we have new uh, plates so they're going on definitely right so we work in reverse now um, as I say I've cleaned up the actual back plate that's just me being anal um, but if you've got if you've got everything off why not give it a clean okay keeps the rust at bay for a little while um, you can also put some coating on there as well if you want to but I'm not going to this time um, what I've got to do now is find where that little screw came out which is just there and I don't really want to be 
putting my greasy mitts on these too much, but I'm going to clean them up anyway. In fact, aha, that's reminding me, before you put them on, some brake cleaner, because they come with a film on them. Good job of reminding myself. As I said, I'm not an expert, but I know my stuff. Okay, so there you go, it's just got the, the greasy film off them. It's just a protective film, stop them rusting in transit and when they sit in the shop. So, the peg is up. What I've done is put a little bit of copper grease around there, um, just to make it easier if I have to take these off again. Um, start some seizing up a little bit, but it's not a massive problem, but it's also no hassle putting it on. So, I wonder if, that's it, stay there. I wonder if the kit comes with a new screw. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be good? They never do. No, <laughs> got some instructions. Might be needing those. <laughs> and it's got some new bolts. So it's got the bolts, it's got the plates. Hasn't got the screw. So we'll re reuse the screw again. Which is no biggie. No biggie at all. Okay, sorry about that. I just got the disturbed by the, the good wife. So, where was we? A screw. So line that up there. Pop your little screw in there. Now, I know a lot of people leave these off and it's personal choice. I put them in because it is slightly annoying when the disc drops and turns if you're changing the wheel or something like that. Um, so I put them in. But again, it's personal choice. They're there, it's no hassle to put them in, so why not do it? That's my philosophy. Not everybody's though. Okay, so give that a little nip up. Again, you don't need an awful lot to tighten this up because when you've got the wheel on it holds it in place anyway but just give it a little nip and that is the easy bit so we've got the disc on let's give that a little clean up there like that excellent so the disc is on and um, what I've got to do now is get the backing plate back on again um, so this is the backing plate that holds all your caliper in place. I'm going to give it a clean up and I might actually do it off camera because it's not easy to get my head around the back there with the head cam on. Um, there's not much to see. Basically you can get the idea. That fits in there like that. And the two screws go through from the back right into the front. Um, you want to put a bit of pressure on these. I don't know what the torque is. Um, I've worked in the motor industry for years. I've worked in engineering for years. and. I'm pretty good at talking stuff up. Um, I've got a pretty good eye for talking to where they need to be, but I'm imagining they're probably be about 40, 50 pounds, something like that, uh, on Newton meters. But I'm gonna give them a good lean on the breaker bar and that should be enough for them. Right, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna get it back on and you can join me in a minute. And we're back, the disc is on. The bracket is on and bolted up and tightened right up, nice and tightly. Uh, disc is clean, so it's just pads in now. I get the caliper back on and that's this side done. I'm not gonna bore you with doing the other side, uh, but I will take you through the front as well. Again, it's not a, an instructional video. It's, it's just me recording a bank holiday weekend brake change. Cause you know, why not? <laughs> right, let's stop waffling. Let's get the pads in. Now looking at all these pads, I think they're all identical. There they are. Um, I'm a little concerned about the bolts as well. Um, I'm going to put some Loctite on these because they should have mass on them. If we look at the old ones, if I've still got them, where have I put them? Here they are. That blue stuff you can see on there is um, it's like a Loctite, it's a mass coating. And um, what happens is uh, it kind of fills the threads up when you screw it in and it's um, it's usually pretty much vibration proof and it basically holds the bolt in and stops it turning around or coming out um, when the vibration is happening through the car over time. Um, I'm a little surprised that these haven't got it on, but in fact, I'm very surprised because really you don't want your brake bolts coming out because 
that kind of makes your brakes not work and makes you crash so I'm going to stick a bit of Loctite on them and then I'm going to bolt them all together again right let's get going okay so one thing I wasn't overly impressed with then let me just show you um, in this new kit the brake pads are fine um, but these little metal things that came with it as you can see the new ones are smaller yeah, let me uh, <laughs> point the camera in the right direction so the new ones are smaller so I'm going to recycle the old ones um, I don't think it would matter personally because um, your brake pad only moves a certain amount of distance anyway but yeah I don't, I'm not going to use those um, the old ones are fine as you can see so I'm going to recycle those but yeah mostly bizarre but um, right okay let me just carry on cleaning I just wanted to show you this and then I'll, I'll show you us putting the pads in and getting it all completed catch you in a minute okay the one thing I've got to do now is to back that off so the way you do it is you have to have a tool <laughs> here we go again how this net tools it's the same in most cars to be honest so I'm gonna grab my tool I'm gonna back that off give me a little bit of an extra cleanup as well because I like clean brakes yeah and I should paint them blue orange yellow pink purple whatever I've also um, just realized I think I've left the handbrake on as well <laughs> Duh, schoolboy error so let me go and let the handbrake off let me go and get my tool we'll back those off and um, get the caliper on join me in a minute didn't leave the handbrake on. I am slightly better than that. <laughs> Join me in a minute. Okay YouTube, this is the tool. Um, all it basically is, is a plate that fits in there, a screw that fits, hope you can see this, in there, and it winds it backwards. Um, you have to screw them backwards because that is actually on an adjuster, which is a screw adjuster. So you have to, you have to back them off. You can't just push them in like the front ones because they're self-adjusting, uh, where the front ones don't need to be self-adjusting. So basically that fits on there like that. And you turn it like so. Uh, as easy as this, yeah. <laughs> this one's a bit tight. So it obviously hasn't been screwed back in a while. It's a bit fiddly this, but uh, once you start backing them off, it's not usually too bad. They're just a bit of a pain sometimes to get started. And it's not easy having to sort of stop your caliper from moving around as well. All the joys of DIY car repair. As you can see there, it's just starting to move. It's not a quick process by any means, but once you get it started, once you get some leverage behind it, it does start to move, but it ain't easy. you just got to take it one bit at a time. If it's absolutely rock solid and you can't move it, then you've got a problem. Um, but they will be stiff. They will be stiff, I do warn you. So don't be too concerned if you think you've gone too far. I mean, that looks obviously too much, but from experience, and this is only from experience, what, um, what sometimes happens, you go back a little way and then you'll find yourself you know, trying to force it on the pads. Um, personally, I'd rather take it off too far and let it have a chance to self-adjust. It will self-adjust back again. Uh, it may take three or four pumps, but it's, uh, it'll come back again. So don't be too afraid of taking it right the way back. And that was that's right at the stop now, that one. Um, yeah, that's right at the stop now. So it is as far as it will go. So just getting some of this brake dust off here. Um, again, get yourself one of these. These are brilliant. It is a copper 
wire brush. Great for cleaning things up. Right, so as you can see now, all that happens is that slips in place there. Um, as I said earlier, um, where have I put it now? We've got some new bolts. I'm going to use the new bolts because obviously the old ones, you ram them up quite tight, so you know, there, is a, there is a chance you could stretch them. But what I am going to do is put some Loctite on them. You don't need a lot of Loctite. Okay? It does draw itself in on the threads. A little covering like that should be fine. And then these bolts, as before, go back in there again. Again, you're going to be able to wind it in a little bit of the way, but not all the way. And then get the second bolt. And again, stick a little bit of Loctite on it. And I hope this is uh, coming out good on camera. And probably can't see this, but the second one goes in. So that is basically the brake pads in, the brake disc on obviously, and everything back in place from where it came from. Obviously now I've got to tighten it up and I'll do that off camera because that's going to be really boring. Um, I'm going to do the other side, I'm not going to record that because um, basically I want to start getting on now. It does hold you up recording and talking and fixing at the same time. So I'm going to get the other side back done, I'll get the car jacked up on the front and then I'll take you through the front ones. That is what they call hard work. <laughs> and there we have it, the back brakes are done. And it didn't take long at all. Of course, with the power of the internet and YouTube, it only took a few minutes. Um, I captured as much as I thought was necessary. Um, put some extra bits in to show you how much of a pain in the backside those brackets are to get off, retaining brackets, but it is done. It took me, with the videoing as well, about three hours, so not too bad, but obviously if you were taking it to a garage they'd probably charge you about five hours work. So I'm going to have a little tidy up, um, get it back on its wheels again, and then going to jack the front up, and they're going on, the big beasties. But at the moment, I think I need a little intermission and a little sit down and definitely a drink because it's getting hot now. As you can see, the, the sky is blue and the sun is out. It's becoming a very nice day. I don't know what temperature is, but I'm guessing it's getting on for probably 19 to 20 degrees. So that's part one done. Um, part one for me, the back brakes. And now it's the front brakes. So join me soon. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So we're on the front brakes now. Got the wheels off. Um, probably do myself a favour and turn the steering actually, but the bolts we're looking for are those ones there this time. So there's two bolts, and basically the whole caliper comes off with those two bolts being removed. So all I've got to do now is uh, I think a 21, so I get a 21 socket, and basically get that caliper off. So YouTube, you're back on head cam again. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a bit of a lip. Oh, static shock, excellent. There's a bit of a lip just there on these. But I did notice on the other side, probably not so much here, that there is a little bit of cracking. But anyway, I say, all I've got to do is basically get these bolts off. They are 21 mil. And I'm gonna see if the faithful Ugga Dug We'll do it. Right, it's gonna get noisy. Maybe this is a music time. Let's go for it.
<laughs> well, that was too much to hope for, wasn't it? Right, breaker bar time. Oh, nothing like the unmistakable sound of crack, crack, crack. Oh, it's bruised the hell out of you, thinking you're going to shear a bolt off. Back it forwards and backwards a little bit, just to make sure. Get all that rust and rubbish off it. So I think now, if we get the impact gun on it, it should be okay. I'm going to drop the bottom one as well, just to uh, make it a little easier. So, <laughs> let's see if we can get you in here. So, the bottom one is right down there. Again, 21 mil. And lovely and tight. Which, let's be honest, you want the brakes. The bolts hold the brakes on tight, don't you? Right, let's knock them off, loosen them off. Now we'll see how we get on with the gun. As you can see, there's a fair old bit of um, mm, corrosion on there, so it's not been off for a while. There you go, there are the bolts. And now the caliper should just drop off. What I like to do when taking the caliper off is get it and give it a bit of a twist. Now, what this is doing is actually backing up the pistons on the brake caliper so if you give it some of that it makes it easier when you go and put the new pads in so as you can see a lot easier than the, the back ones um, I think these are EBC brakes on these red stuff if I remember rightly the guy said um, that is a heavy old caliper <laughs> and I know for a fact that the discs are pretty heavy too Let's just get my socket. And we'll drop the disc off. Hopefully, that will come out as easy as the back ones. Yes, it has. Excellent. So there we go. This is so much easier than the back, obviously. So, I don't know if it's going to need just a little persuasion. There you go. And the disc is off. Good stuff. Right, I'm going to give it a little bit of a clean up. Um, going to get the brake pads out. I'm going to also clean these up a bit because they are absolutely filthy. And you will join me when that's been done. Okay, before I clean them up, just because they are so heavy, I've just put a bolt in the top there because all that's holding them pretty much is the pipe and I don't want to break that what I could do I suppose is drop the pipe out of there um, but there's no need to be honest so I can work like that for now um, get the brake pads out get it all cleaned up and uh, then we'll get to putting a new disc on so there's always a point where you go hmm this is far too easy and yeah I got to that point so yes I've dropped the caliper off but then I was kind of going, mm, okay, how are the pads hold in? Now, <laughs> what I've seen is behind here, there is, oh, there's a cap you have to take off. Um, I think that one's still on. I'm taking off. There's a cap just down there. You might be able to see that. Behind that cap is an Allen key. And that Allen key holds what looks like this bracket on. And that bracket's got to come off to allow the brake pads to come out. So... That's what I'm doing now. So give me a minute, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so that's basically what they look like. So those two pins are now out. So in theory, I'm hoping all this should come apart. <laughs> yeah. So at the moment, okay, I think I can see what's going on. It looks like the actual S emblem holds the front in. Ok, 
Okay. <laughs> Is that what it does? Ah, there we go. So yeah, that S emblem there is on the spring clip. And that actually holds all this together. So you've got to unclip it. And there probably is an easier way. As I said from the beginning, you are joining me with never ever doing this job before. And I'm not a hundred percent sure how to do it. But that's the whole learning experience when you're dealing with cars. So that has definitely got to come out. But it seems quite a hefty unit. I'm thinking you have to clip it from there and slide it out. Like that. <laughs> Okay, so that makes sense. So that clip holds that in, and that clip, if you can see it, clips in there. So that bit goes in there, like that. And then those two bits basically go under that bracket. So when you've done that, as suspected, everything comes off, just like that. The problem I've got now is, <laughs> I've got nothing to take the weight again. So, I'm going to have to be really careful because I do not want to damage that pipe. So, where's my bungee? I'm going to lean that on there like that, let it just take the weight. Go and get my bungee! And I'm going to bungee it up. it takes the weight and coil over springs seem the perfect thing to do that there you go so that is the bottom end of it a lot of muck in there but basically now the pads should in theory just pop out like that there you go that's all that holds them in so it's uh, I'm going to give that a tidy up and a clean and then I'll be putting the brake pads back in, all the new ones in. Right, join me then. Okay, we're back on head cam again. So, I'll give it a bit of a clean up. I know it wasn't uh, anything structural or anything that would cause a problem, but this is why I like doing DIY mechanics, because um, I think what had happened is a CV joint, or a boot or something, had leaked at some point. But um, basically, you know, if you're doing DIY mechanics stuff yourself, you then get a chance to a chance to sort things out. So that's the brake pads out. I'm just going to compare the brake disc and the brake pads now. Make sure they're the right ones because it's silly to put them on before you compare them and uh, then we'll get to bolting them up. The moment of truth then. Let's compare. Oh these are heavy. <laughs> Let's compare old with new shall we? That's good to me. Cool boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you're not going to get this on video, but believe me, these are heavy discs. I can see why high-end sports cars go for carbon fibre, because when discs get big, there's a lot of metal there. Okay, so I'm just going to give these a quick spruce over. Where's me? Here it is. Here's my brake clean. Give them a quick brake clean. Get all the dirt and dust off them. And all the oil. Find a nice clean bit on my rag. Yeah, as you can see there, you know they have got a protective coating on them, so it makes sense. You don't want them rusting when they're sitting around in the shop because it is mild steel at the end of the day, and it will rust. Give them a good, good clean up. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you're going to be uh, burning them, but. You don't want to mess up your brake pads when you first first brake. Alright, 
I'm going to get my little screw in hand because I'm going to need that. And I'll take, take this bracket off. Now again, I hope the camera work is allowing you to see this. I'll move that out of the way. That was just my my catch can while I was cleaning. In fact, I just put put that under there because I do not want to mess the driveway up cleaned it and just acid cleaned it so I don't want to mess it up too much but it is going to have a pressure washer soon as well so let's just get this bracket off like so drop the disc on again lining up the little hole for the little screw oh join me on the floor <laughs> probably the camera about half a dozen times. Where are you? There it is. Just there. That looks good. Um, not in there. Ah, it's on. Ah, Brembo. That's what was in it. Okay, fair enough. They did used to make a nice uh, screeching sound when they were cold. Okay, let's uh, open up the box and let's hope everything's good. Been good so far, but I had that thing to turn it before. But basically, we're not fit for purpose. Right, I think. Those ones there have got Okay, they've got the brake warning on them, so that must be the other side. Because it definitely ain't this side. Unless I'm missing something. No, nope, definitely not. So both the pads this side don't have a brake warning, so it must be these. Ooh, they feel nice and rough. Hmm. So we can about new brakes. Okay, they both to me look the same, so we'll drop that in there like that. Drop that one in there like huh. Okay, we won't drop that one in there like that. They're not both the same. <laughs> ah, okay. First problem. Yeah, that one's different. No! No! Right, I think I need to um, contact the place I got these from and, um, yeah, discuss. Right, this is where the stupidity bit kicks in again. So, these both came in the same packet. They're the backing ones. So, that one goes in there, like that. Not a problem. These ones came in the same packet together. And look what I see. <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, that ain't gonna work. Cool, talk about tight. So, I was moaning a minute ago, it was loose in there. <laughs> yeah, I should have really kept my mouth shut. Let's try and get a bit closer. This isn't going to be easy with the head cam on, but basically, if you can see it, those tabs have got to go in there. I think I'll do myself a little favour. Get me more grips. I'm going to give those a little bit of persuasion inwards. Because there's no way they're going to 
hop in there if I don't. Holy crap! Wow, <laughs> that was easy. Right, well that's that one on. All right, let's get the bracket back in. A little bit of clean up. Yeah, just a bit of a clean up to get the uh, dirt and grease off it. Make sure all the areas where the pads are going to sit are good. Uh, a little bit of copper grease. Just a smear of copper grease on there as well. Just to keep the area as rust free as I can. Put this back on again. Definitely a biker day today. You can probably hear all the bikers rushing past. Maybe I'll get mine out later. Mm. Bang! Sorry about keep bashing you on everything, but as you can imagine, it's not that easy wearing a head cam and doing your brakes. <laughs> a little bit of uh, penetrative oil on there just to, I don't want to take too much of that gun cough because it will help to keep it in place and it's only a little bit of alloy rust so it's not too bad. It doesn't really matter. those on. I'm going to leave them loose for now because I want to get this on. I'll tighten everything up together. So in theory I should now drop in like that. Excellent. Oh yeah I'll see what happens now. Yeah the S bit goes into the brake pad to hold it in place. Okay so panic over. I did have the right pads. Um, just me having a stupid moment. Uh, right, so in theory now, those bolts go back in to keep everything in place. Like that. One in. Number two in. I'm just wondering if I should have put the clip on first personally, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So that is the retaining bolts back in. That holds the calibre in place. And now, of course I'm going to give this a little clean up before we put it back on. Just me being me again. That, in theory, should go under there. Do that side first. Under there. <laughs> See, this is going to be a challenge. Let me sit down for this. So that goes under there like that. Yeah. 
as I thought, a bit of a challenge. in everything's tight brilliant that wasn't so bad once you know what you're doing <laughs> so yeah basically the s s emblem held holds held holds the front in uh, on a spring obviously so it's got some movement and so two bolts at the back to hold the top part of the caliper in and two bolts to hold the bracket in so now I will tighten it all up and get on with the other side. Hopefully this has been enough information to help you again. Um, so I'm not going to record the other side because obviously as I said last time I want to get on and I want to get this finished today um, and now I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's great. Um, Audi have changed over the years and I've worked on many Audis but obviously the newer ones have different ways of doing things but it's just a way of logically working it out. Nothing to be scared of. You just got to yeah, look at it, assess it and if you're really really stuck use the internet but yeah so far it's uh, yeah it's not been too bad so right i'm going to bolt this all back up and then get the car back on the ground again or get the other side done get it back on the ground uh join me for the the end summary if you will so there you go ladles and jelly spoons yes i did say ladles and jelly spoons or ladies and gentlemen if you like it that way we're done so the car is back on the floor all the new brakes are on um, so from the video I didn't bore you with every single side but you get the idea um, lessons learned um, the back brakes those two bolts around the back to hold the caliper support on are a pain in the ass but you know a bit of perseverance we got there um, this and that didn't go on too bad brake pads didn't go on too bad uh, I say again, I used to be in the trade many years ago, things have moved on, things have changed, I've not actually done the brakes on this before, so it was a learning curve and it was a, a challenge, but hopefully as you can see from the video, it's nothing to be scared of, it's just working it out, um, you know, a few bruised knuckles later, a little bit of swearing and <laughs> everything's good. Uh, front brakes, mm, yeah, a bit of, uh, made sense the way they were hung together, but um, yeah, it took a little while to figure that out. Obviously the, the S bit on the front there, um, once you've got the hang of that, basically there's a clip at the bottom, stick a screwdriver under there and it'll pop off. Once you've got that off and the two bolts out the back or the two grub screws, everything's pretty good. But yeah, it wasn't too difficult. Um, all in all, five hours I suppose, give or take. But obviously with videoing, um, it does take time. But um, yeah, all it needs now is a damn good clean of the polish because it hasn't been done for a little while. Um, obviously bed the brakes in, which I'm going to do very soon and um, then yeah, enjoy it for a little while but uh, yeah that is it that is done um, hopefully it uh, it may help somebody along the way if they're doing their own brakes on the, on an S3 uh, again don't be scared of it nothing at all to be scared of um, it's just you know it's one of those learning curves of life um, there you go so I'm going to now take it for a little drive, it's a gorgeous day as you can see, the sun is out, the sky is blue, it's absolutely gorgeous. So whatever you're doing this weekend guys, enjoy it. Oh, just before I go, just a testament to these brakes, it had Brembo's in it. Now I've had this car a year and a half and look at the meat left on those. They create a lot of black dust and to be honest they're getting a little bit hard now but yeah I've got to say, Brembo's seem good brakes. Um, I've just put your normal sort of uh, stock ones in it because I don't drive like a lunatic well not all the time anyway but um, they'll be adequate for me I'm not doing track days and stuff like that um, so just got to bed them in now um, with all new brakes um, I'm not trying to teach you how to suck eggs but take it easy at first I mean I'm just going to drive slowly up the road a couple of brakes just to make sure it's pulling square and everything's okay um, don't go mad on them for the first hundred or so miles just bed them in nice and gently you know put them for a few heat cycles get them used to being uh, hot and cold and you shouldn't have any problems with them 
Right, that is it. I'm now going to get changed, clean myself up and go for a drive. Cheers YouTube. Have a great day. Have a great bank holiday weekend.